Wallace and Dave Brown. We're right along ringside. Whoa, what a group we got today, huh, Dave? Boy, I'll tell you, that's in keeping with the kind of program that we got lined up for today's championship wrestling. Going to have the big guy out of Austin, Texas in here to begin with. Dirty Rhodes will be here in the opening match. Right. Following that, the Dutchman from Oil Trough, Texas. We will have Dundee and Landell. They'll be together as a tag team today. The Fantastics will be here, too. Right. Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton. Mm -hmm. And that. a little bit later on, we are going to have in an expiration of time match, J.D. Costello and the Mod Squad. Mod Squad. First time that we've had them here, we've seen uh, the advanced billing on them and heard what Costello had to say about them. We'll see Spike and Jack and Basher and J.D. Costello a little bit. Also, we got an interesting interview with Dutch Mantell. I think that'll reveal if you can get close to this kind of a guy, a little bit about Dutch's personality in there. All of that and a bunch more, we better get going back with the opening bout with Dirty Roads in just a moment. Sit back. Whoa. Relax. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Turn up the music. No more MTV. No more Twisted Sister. And leave the driving to us. I thought it was this is us. We're ready to go. Official yes, announcement. All right. It's going to be one fall, 15-minute time limit match. Introducing at 211 pounds from Mississippi, Benny Trailer, And going against him from Austin, Texas at 301 pounds, Dirty Road. This match is going to be a one fall, 15-minute time limit match. And the referee for this match is Jeff Jarrett. Okay, we're about ready to go. One fall, 15 minutes. Bell time. Here we go. Dirty Roads. Benny Trailer. Certainly the size advantage on uh, Dirty's part, and that's true most of the time, Dave. That's right. Almost a 100-pound weight advantage uh, for Dirty Roads. Dirty Roads, little experience advantage, too. Benny Trailer, of course, uh, primarily a tag team wrestler, as we have seen him here with his partner. Dirty Roads puts the body slam on Benny Trailer. Dirty drops down on him. I think he was going to sit down on him. He missed. But put him under the ropes. Benny Trailer. Not off to a very good start here. Dirty Rhodes. Wow. Snaps him over and down. Trailer popped into the ropes. Dirty Rhodes got him. With the elbow right in the top of the head. Oh, he drops down. Here's a cover. Might be it. Counts at two and three. Well, it only took him a minute. Dirty Rose comes through with a size advantage and turns it into a victory as he dominates Benny Trailer here in the opening match. The time on it, one minute even. And we are going to be back in just a moment with more of championship wrestling action. back into the action here in just a moment. I got to take time to tell you this and tell it to you just like it is. This coming up may be one of the most important championship wrestling programs we have ever been involved with, and you know that is a lot of them. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I am going to tell you about some of the action coming into the Coliseum Wednesday night in Evansville. The main event I'm going to hold off on, but let me tell you, the card without the main event is a sensational card. Coming back to Evansville will be Joe LaDuke, the old crazy French guy. Canadian will be there, and brother, look out, Coliseum. In addition to that, an AWA Southern Tag Team title, and it's got my interest up. The Fantastics, Bobby and Tommy, will be going against the impressive team of the Mod Squad. I say that, J.D. Costello, because obviously the promoters recognize it. They've given you a title shot right off the bat. That's right, Lance. You know, you're a man of class. I admire you. You wear the most expensive clothes that money can buy. And what do you know? So do I. You know, talk is cheap. I've been talking for the past five weeks about Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton. from you. 
But now it's time to stop talking. It's time for action in the squared circle, the Fantastics against the Mod Squad. And what you're seeing right here is the next Southern Tag Team Champions. Well, that, uh, of course, is why the match is going to be held in the Coliseum Wednesday night in Evansville. You've talked a lot about them. How about introducing uh, these gentlemen from the Badlands of New Orleans? They were fired by the New Orleans Police Department. I make no bones about it. That's why they're here today. Meet Spike. You can't drop kick him. Look at that. Here's, here's Basher, same with him. These are men, these are men going up against two pretty boys, and we're gonna come out on top. Well, those, that's gotta be your opinion, but those two pretty boys have done pretty well. J.D. Costello and the Mod Squad, you'll be seeing them in Evansville Wednesday night right there at the Coliseum. In addition to that, stay tuned. You have got to see what comes up. Okay, we mentioned a little bit earlier, right at the beginning of the show, of course, they didn't hear that. They wouldn't have heard us mention it at all. We got <laughs> them. Yeah, boy, have we got a great show. Well, we do. To, you know, and actually, uh, while a lot of times all this bragging goes by the board when, uh, when you see the action in there, I'm really interested in seeing the Mod Squad. They will be here for the first yeah. appearance, and uh, I've heard a lot of things about them, so we'll be seeing J.D. Costello and the Mod Squad a little bit later on. Dutch Mantel complex kind of a guy in one way and another way he's a very simple kind of a guy he's very direct very straight ahead he doesn't like he lets you know that let you know that he seldom is uh, is bubbly about anybody in particular interesting conversation he had with eddie marlin and we've got it on tape let's take a listen to it dutch i just wanted to get with you this morning and talk to you i've had phone calls after phone calls thousands of letters they want to know what had happened to dutch mantel and bill dundee of course I've seen and most of the fans have seen the fight that y'all had on TV. But y'all were such close buddies. Every time Bill Dundee would go to the ring, you would stand at the dressing room door. The minute he got in trouble, you hit the ring. Dundee watched your back. Everywhere you seen one, you seen the other. And something had to happen to bring that fight on. And we'd mm -hmm. just like to get to the bare facts and nobody but Dutch Mantell can really tell us exactly what happened. Well, let me let me say this. You want to hear the story? I sure it's do. It's a deep-rooted story, and it goes back. It goes back years and years and years. Let me take. Well, this here, just here. take this. And I want you to listen, Eddie, and I hope it, the fans can understand. I was here for a long, long time, and so was Bill Dundee, and uh, I knew him here. And then, uh, as you have to do in a wrestling profession, you have to move around. So, Bill Dundee, he went to Louisiana, and I went to Florida. And uh, when I was in Florida, you know, then I had an opportunity to go down to, to Louisiana, and uh, that's where Bill was. So when I went down there, it's only a natural occurrence that since I'd, I'd known him here, you know, we were big buddies there. He was glad to see me. I was glad to see him. And we began to uh, sort of team up together and ride, make uh, wrestling matches in different parts of the country together and fly and everything. And where you saw Bill, you saw me, because we were friends. And we'd ride them down the road, and I'd take my guitar, and I'd play it, and boy, me and Bill, we would sing and all this stuff. We had, to me, I thought we had a good thing going. And uh, I would chew, sit over there and chew my tobacco and t tell jokes and just, you know, basically just have a good time. And we'd listen to country music on the way up there and on the way back and wherever, and, you know, and we'd get to hit to the airports. We'd go to the bar and get around and stuff. So the time the flight would leave. So finally, Bill, his, his contract was up down there. And he said, I want to go back. I want to go back home. So his contract was up. So Bill left. And after about a month, you know, I sort of like wanted to go back too. So it took me another couple of weeks. Bill got back here before I did. And uh, took me a little longer because I had three or four weeks of obligations and commitments that I was obligated to that I had to make. <clears throat> so I did that and I came back in here. And everything was just like it was when it was, we was in Louisiana. You know, we would still make trips together and still play country music and still have a good time, you know. And it is true that when Bill got in trouble, I helped him out. Because when I'm friends with somebody, you know, I like to, st I'll say I'll stay true to him. And then uh, this blonde-headed guy named Buddy Landell showed up. Now, let me tell you one thing, Eddie. I don't know if you know this or not. Let me tell you people about Bill Dundee. Bill Dundee is like a chameleon. Is that the word? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if it's a little lizard-looking thing. When it gets on a green thing, it turns green. Or if it gets on something black, it'll turn black. It just blends in. Now, Bill Dundee has a, a characteristic about him that when he gets around somebody, he sort of tries to adopt 
their characteristics and their personality. When he was with me, he liked country music. And he chewed more tobacco. He was always bumming me for tobacco. I'd get in the car, and Bill would say, Dutch, did you bring the tobacco? And I'd say, yeah, Bill, I brought the tobacco. But it wasn't no big thing, because he was a friend of mine. You know, I just, I accepted him for what he was. And Buddy Landell got here, and all of a sudden, I noticed this big, big change in Dundee. And all of a sudden, he was, uh, he was assuming the, uh, the characteristics of a nature boy, Buddy Landell. See, when me and Bill were together before, before Landell, we would go to places that had low ceilings, right, smoky, and we'd drink Jack Daniels, right? But when Landell got here, he wanted to go places with high ceilings and chandeliers where they drink wine and talk about the Zodiac and play backgammon in the back. See, I just don't fit in a place like that. And uh, uh, Landell, obviously, he's got into Dundee's ear, and, uh, you know, I heard him say, you know, that I was a redneck and I was a hillbilly and that I cramped his style. And pretty soon, Dundee was agreeing with him that I'd cramp Dundee's style. Now, to me, that just ain't right. I didn't cramp his style before. We pulled up to a restaurant one day, and it was going in, I, you know, and Landell turned back to me, and he said, Dutch, why don't you stay in the car because you look like a bum? Well, to me, I didn't look like a bum in Louisiana. I looked the same. I looked down. You know, I like to wear jeans. Landell, he likes to wear $500 suits, which is fine with me. I don't care. Next thing I know, Dun uh, Dundee's showing up in a tuxedo, and he's walking around. But let me tell you one thing. See, what happened is I didn't stop liking them. They stopped liking me, which is fine with me. Because I'm my own man. Lance Russell said it before that I'm a loner. Yeah, I am a loner. I like to do things my way. And if somebody else wants to do things their way, hey, that's fine. But don't knock me for the way I want to do things. You understand what I'm talking about? It's not hard to, under it's not hard it's not hard to understand at all. But let me tell you one thing, people, about Dundee and Landell. I can whoop Bill Dundee and I can whoop Buddy Landell. Together, or head up, because I ain't backing down from nobody and I ain't backing down from them. So if you want to know the reason, what happened? That's the reason. They stopped liking me, I didn't stop liking them. When they call me a redneck and hillbilly, hey, that's fine. But when you say something, Eddie, you got to be able to back it up. You got to have enough weight in that rear end to back up what you say. That's right, Dutch. Well, Dutch, we appreciate you explaining it to us. I understand it, and I think the fans out there understand it. And by the way, you said you carried your guitar on the trips with you? Now, yeah, I does. like country music, and everybody out there knows I chew tobacco. And you if you'll carry that guitar... Yeah, sure have. <laughs> if you'll carry that guitar with you, you can ride up and down the road with me. Would you listen to me? Sure. Okay. Let me play you? I got my guitar right here. Sure, man. You want to hear something? I love Hang it. Hang on. All right, golly. We'll play this song. What you want to hear, Ed? Anything you'll play me. What you want to hear? Just something hey, country. Guitar? How much you think this guitar cost me? I ain't no telling. I can't tell you. It's a secret, man. <laughs> what you want to hear? What, a little wildwood flower? That's fine. <laughs> Texas, number one citizen, the Dutchman. Okay, Davy. One fall, 15-minute time limit match from Mississippi at 212 pounds, introducing Jerry Garman. And from Oil Trough, Texas, at 229 pounds, there he is, the Dutchman, Dutch Mantell. One fall, 15-minute time limit match. Referee is Jerry Calhoun. Okay, bell time, and here we go, Jerry Garman, good little athlete out of Mississippi, going against the very experienced and rugged Dutchman, who immediately takes him over, pops that arm bar on him, and Dutch doesn't handle you with kid gloves very no, much, Dave. He, doesn't. he no, grabs he doesn't. a hold of you. He grabs a hold of you. Dutch standing side of the clock. Pops that hips to him and takes him right over and down. Gets a one count. Garment easily gets the right shoulder blade up. Yeah, that's not a hold uh, to be able to keep that right shoulder down. Uh, Dutch knows that. He's just working on him with that headlock. Wasn't really going for the pin at that no. point. Staying right with him. Center of the ring. Hanging on to that side headlock. Back over in the ropes. The referee calls for a break. And the Dutchman draws the fist back. Holds up on it. Referee steps in between and off and running we go again. Well, Dutch will do it to you either way. I mean, he 
will get in there. He can wrestle. There is no two. Oh, yeah. We've said that a million times and uh, made no bones about our admiration for his ability to wrestle. Now, the Dutch will get mean with you, too. And I mean, at the slightest provocation, drop of the hat or the bat of an eye, he'll do it to you. He just dropped a lower leg on Garmin, who was lucky to get out of that one. He hurt him when he dropped down on him, Dave. Yeah, Garmin, I wasn't sure he was going to be able to kick out of that one, but he did at the two count. There's a one count. Again, Dutch with a headlock. Same situation as earlier. The uh, not, not a real good way to hold the uh, right shoulder down when you've got the headlock like that. We're about to, coming up on the two-minute mark here. Minute 50, gone in this one. Garmin, firing that right hand at Dutch, whips him across the way. Oh. Garmin had been a little intimidated. He made the rush on Dutch in the corner, in which he had, and he caught that foot right in the head. Oh, oh. Slams him down, covers him up. Two, three. Yeah, no getting up from that power slam. Two minutes, 12 seconds the time on it as the Dutchman takes it. Yeah, Garmin made his move on Dutch after being intimidated by him, but oh, I'll tell you one thing for a living fact. He came in there too quick, and Dutch, boom! Him with a boot. He rattled him with that boot, put him down, and power slammed him, and son of a gun, he got the one, two, three. We still got a bunch of action to go. Dundee and Landell will be here. The Fantastics, J.D. Costello and the Mod Squad. All of that yet to come back in a moment. And you have got to stay tuned for the entire program. Looking back in retrospect, I tell you, this has got to be one of the wildest shows that we have ever been involved with. Do want to tell you this. Get your pencil out. How about Monday, March the 10th at Litchfield, Kentucky, the Grayson County High School. What an outstanding night of action that is going to be. You'll be seeing the mod squad that we met a little bit earlier there. Also, you'll be seeing Dundee and Landell. They'll be in Litchfield on March the 10th. Thursday, March the 13th, Ramsey, Indiana at the North. North Harrison High School. What a great card is coming in there. That's the 10th at Litchfield, the 13th at Ramsey, Indiana. Your time to get out and see championship wrestling in person. How about Wednesday night in Evansville? Well, again, I'm going to hold the main event. You've got to see that. Billy Travis goes against Pat Rose, Abdul Gaddafi against Frank Morrell. Crazy French Canadian Joe LeDuc comes back, and you're going to be seeing the Fantastics against the Mod Squad plus a dynamite main event. Hey, we're waiting now for all the troops to get in here, and here come a couple of them. And we got four of them into the ring. We're ready for our next tag team action, Dave. It'll be one fall, 15-minute time limit match. Introducing at a total weight of 419 pounds, both out of Memphis, Tennessee, David Johnson and Jim Jamison, going against them at a total of 438 pounds. From Australia, the superstar, the living legend, Bill Dundee, his partner from Los Angeles, California, the nature boy, Buddy Landell. Landell wearing the Mid-America belt, Dundee wearing the Southern title. This match, one fall, 15-minute time limit. Jeff Jarrett is the referee. I don't want to say anything about Landell's robe as to the quality of it, but I noticed it shedding. I see some of the yeah. fur coming <laughs> off on the ground down there. Dundee slipping off his uh, his outer suit and will be ready to go as Jeff Jarrett says, uh, come on, Billy, let's get this thing underway. And, you know, I see when you're the champion, you don't have to hurry for, me, for anybody. All right. David Johnson starting out against the superstar. But let's take time. Dundee has just called time out here. Sure. Yeah, referee is saying, come on. We don't have time out here. Let's go. Oh, Dundee. Going after young David Johnson. Johnson with a chop. Dundee just open hand slapped him across the face. Obviously class Jamison and Johnson uh, just will tell it like it is Dundee and Landell both single title holders oh boy that elbow crucified David Johnson he's still hanging in there trying to battle his way back boy the both of them are vicious here today Landell and Dundee Landell 
to take an cue from Dundee, and when he stepped through there, he has just been pounding first Johnson and now Jim Jamison. Oh, Jamison literally knocked halfway across the ring by Dundee. Body slam. Dundee didn't just body slam him. He threw him down. He did right in the middle of the Now he's going over slapping David Johnson. Jamison trying to battle his way back, but Dundee leaned back. Slick move to nail him with the bottom of his foot right in the face. He is back on top of him, and there's a tag on the nature board. What a chop he put on him. Both of them just unrestrained here today. They are just going all out, working over Jim Jamison and David Johnson. We're about two minutes into the action. And it's been all Landell at Dundee. Boy, and you called it right. All Landell at Dundee. They have been pumping on Johnson and Jamison. Dundee holding him down right now. Slaps him a little across the face. Bang! Big right hand in the midsection, but Dundee right back at him, and he slams him into the ropes, and referee Jeff Jarrett says, come on, back it up, keep the fist open. Dundee, double fist across the back of the neck. Ah, Jamison thrown out of the ring, down on the floor. Dundee out there after him. Oh, body slam right on the floor. Yeah, ah. I mean. David Johnson coming down to try to help his partner out. The referee running Dundee back to the corner, uh, finally. Coming up on three minutes in this match. 15 minutes is the overall time limit. David Johnson helping Jim Jamison back up on the ring apron. Trying to get the referee to back Dundee up. He does not back up. He drops an elbow just as Jamison comes through. And, his and Jim buckle there. Oh. Dundee goes that. after Johnson over in the corner. Boy, he nailed him, knocked him right off the ring. And Dundee right back on Jamison, tags Buddy Landell. down on Jamison. Coming around to the four-minute mark where, what, three and a half minutes? It was a count of three. That's it. Yeah, we were at uh, three minutes, 36 seconds, and that is it as Landell got the three count on him. Dundee and Landell celebrating a victory here, an overpowering victory, I might add, over Jim Jamison and David Johnson. They were, uh, nah, no excuse in that. Buddy Landell, they beat the stew out of them. Now Landell and Dundee are showing what big men they are. Oh, Johnson thrown over the top row. Hey, come on. Landell, they just attacking the referee. That'll cost you. Jeff Jarrett refereeing this match, and Landell just slammed him. There goes Jamison out of the ring. Here comes Jerry Jarrett, Jeff's dad, in, and he nails Dundee. Nails Buddy Landell and right back at Dundee. This is Jerry's son that was refereeing. Uh-oh, Landell got him from behind. And Dundee slams him with a right, puts him down on the deck. Come on, this thing's getting out of hand now. God, Dundee's going for his eyes, Dave. He's only got one good eye in there. Come on.
kid up a year out of high school and they jump on him in there because he's trying to stop him from doing the damage they were doing to Jameson and all. Kid just doing his job here. And then his dad comes out to help him. They double they know team Jerry's him. only got one good eye and they go after it. And start gouging in the eye. That's the sickest thing I ever saw. I'll tell you one thing. That is absolutely ridiculous. With guys, something's got to be done about guys. I've had enough people, and I know you have too, Dave, say, are you guys just going to let Dundee take over the entire program? And the answer to that is no. Something's going to be done about it, because I'll tell you one thing. I know Marlon's going to do something. Jerry will do. And I can guarantee you this is one place I'm not objective about the thing. It's ridiculous. It's bad enough when they come out here and do some of the things they do to, to like, Jamison and Johnson. Sure, they're their opponents. You go in there, you beat them in that. But you don't start beating him around. And then you jump on a kid just out of high school like that. Then his dad comes out and tries to protect him naturally. And the next thing you know, they're in there digging at his eye, the only eye. He's got one bad eye. And they're digging at the only good eye he had. Something's got to be done about that. That is sick. Right. Sick, well, sick. Tell you what, we're going to be back. We've still got more matches to go here. We're going to be back with more in just a moment. We still got a lot of show to go, a lot of things uh, happening on there. They're checking Jerry's eye out right back there now. We've got Falk and, uh, and Eric yep. up in the room. Here they come. There they are, Tommy Rogers, Bobby Fulton, D. This is a non-title match. One fall, 15-minute time limit, introducing at a total of 432 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, Keith Eric, and from St. Louis, Missouri, Tony Falk, going against him at a total of 449 pounds from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, Bobby Fulton, Tommy Rogers, the fantastic. Don't start the match. Oh, oh Jerry, hold on, hold on. Hold it, referee. Jerry, you better, you better get back there. I don't think you're ready to be out here. Right now. Fans, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, God. <laughs> we can talk about it later, Jerry. You don't need to do it right now. I mean, hey, you did whatever you could. Listen. Savage guys come out here and start going after the eyes that's the important thing let's worry about that now jeff is okay he's going to be all right let's let's go okay all right yeah let's let's go on with the match okay all right all right referee jerry calhoun up there we're gonna go on All right, bell sounds, and here we go. The Fantastics going against Tony Falk and Keith Eric. That's Bobby Fulton in there. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold, hey, re hold it. Hold it just a minute, referee. Hold it. Can, can we stop just for a minute? Eddie Marlin. I want to tell you something. Jerry Jarrett's been in my family for a long time. He's a leader. He knows what to do in any circumstances. This is the first time that I've ever seen him in this situation. They tried to put out his one good eye. When he got his eye put out, he didn't cry about it. He didn't tell very few people, but I knew about it. They beat up my grandson and put him out. Jerry don't know what to do, but I know what to do. 
he's the leader and when he's around i'll say what do you want to do jerry and he'll tell me but he's not here to tell me now and i know what to do it's one man that i know of that i can put in there with dutch mantel and they can take care of those two guys and that one man is jerry lawler i don't care about the contract bill dundee you can sue me you can sue the company you can put us out of business but Jerry Lawler, I'm going to go get him on the phone right now. And if I can get Jerry Lawler to come here, he will be against Dundee and Landell. Now, I'm going to call him on the phone, and if I can get him, he will be here. All right. All right. Contract or no contract, Eddie's going to try to get him. We'll, we'll bring you up to date on that. All right, the match is underway again. Restarting here in the fantastic... Going after him, Keith Eric takes the double drop kick as the Fantastic put him down. Tony Falk has just rolled out of the ring. Tommy Rogers going against Keith Eric. Boy, what an announcement by Eddie Marlin, and I don't blame him. Boy, yeah. I tell you, that after all that's going on here, not just today, but in recent weeks, but especially here today, boy, who can blame him for wanting to get somebody in here can get it all stopped and straightened out. Absolutely, Dave. It just has gotten to the point with Dundee and Landell, and Dundee's the ringleader of the thing. Absolutely. Something has got to be done. I, I hate not to be calling the match the way we should. The Fantastics are taking care of business in there. But it is very difficult when you see a friend of 20 years like Jerry Jarrett is of mine to come out here and be in a position where he feels like he can't defend his son because he's going against two knuckleheads up there that do that. And the lowlights don't have any more class than to go for a man's only good eye. He's already lost the sight out of one eye and start to do that. They beat up on a kid like that. Tommy got, uh, well, you can see what's happening. Uh, go ahead, Dave. All right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100%. It's just it's ridiculous. Bobby Fulton drops down on, uh, on Tony Falk. Tony Falk looking toward the corner. He's a long way out of that corner, though. Shoulder up by Bobby Fulton. Down to the net goes Tony Falk. Tony Falk with a very long losing string on championship wrestling. I wouldn't favor him to uh, break that string today either going against Bobby and Tommy. No, you're right there. A little hair pulling by Falk. Well, well, you're breaking up rules. You can win some matches. Falk using the fist right now. Reversal by Bobby Fulton. Nice move. Fantastic. Really looking good, as always. Boy, these guys are in terrific shape. When they show up at the arena, they are ready to wrestle. They were kind enough, and, and uh, referee, too, to uh, hold the match briefly here while we talk to Eddie Marlin. Fantastic themselves showing some class in that. Tony Falk being worked on by Tommy Rogers. Rogers puts him into the rope. Dumps him over the back. And Tony Falk hit hard. Tommy bars the, the right arm of Tony Falk. Three minutes gone in this one. Bobby Fulton taking over. Tony Falk. Oh, I, I think he hit him with a thumb and uh, jabbed his thumb into his throat. Bobby Fulton comes out after him. I don't know what he did, but I think he shouldn't have done it. Falk makes the tag. Keith Eric being hammered by Bobby Fulton. Eric backed into the corner. Tag made, and Tommy Rogers leaps over the rope. Crashes Eric down to the mat. This could be a count to two and three. 
Four minutes, three seconds of action. And there's a high five from Tommy Rogers, Bobby Fulton, as they get the victory here over the team of Keith Eric and a still winless Tony Falk. Well, they had them. They had them beat, but you didn't see them trying to take advantage or anything. All they were in there was to do the business they had to do, not like some people that we've seen on this program today. Let's take time out. We'll be back with more action coming up. J.D. Costello and the Mod Squad in just a few minutes. Well, I tell you, as I look back on the events that took place on this championship wrestling, absolutely unbelievable that you could have two guys act like Dundee and Landell did, but you can make your own opinions. I'll tell you somebody that's got an opinion about it, and that's Dutch Mantell. He's happy. Who's coming back? The King, Jerry Lawler, his partner against Dundee and Landell, Wednesday night, the Coliseum. Now, obviously, there's some comments from the other side of the fence. Bill Dundee and Buddy Landell had some thoughts of their own. You listen to them. Talk about Watergate. Talk about Shafted, bro. 1975, I came here. 1975. Jared Stats, he's stinking company. And about 1977, Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee, and Jerry Jarrett. But, oh, what happens? I get beat in a loser to leave town, and I got to leave for a year. Louisiana, the worst world, brother. It's hot, it stink, it's got mosquitoes, rednecks all over the place, and I'm there one year, and I would call Eddie Martin, but i call him every three months, I'd say, please, Eddie, bring me back anything, under a mask, anything, just let me get out of this. I'm sorry, Bill, I'm sorry. You've got to stay, your contract stays one year. It doesn't matter when Jerry Lawler, though, when Jerry Lawler gets beat three months, and I beat him, I run him out of town, they tear up the contract. They say, come on back, Lawler, you help build this company. What the Think I did, Jared? Where have I been for the last 10 years? I was up and down the road. I bled, I cried, I tears. Now I helped build your stinking company. And you're not giving it to Lawler. You're not bringing it back, Lawler. Jared, Nixon thought he was above it. Nixon thought he could do any he liked. And he couldn't. They impeached him, Jared. And I'm going to get rid of you, boy. But no, I'm going to get rid of him. I'm not scared of you, Lawler. I ain't scared of you, boy. But you're not doing it to me, Lawler. My whole life was to get rid of you. My whole life life was to be at the top of the mountain, and I got the f***ing Jared. Politics is what did it, Bundro, politics. The whole stinking world screwed up in politics, and you're not doing it to me, Jared. Russell, you're not doing it to me. I'm suing the f*** out of you. Okay, coming over to talk to us, and uh, Dutch, thank you very much for coming out here in a miserable situation. Okay, uh, I want to say one thing, you know. What I just saw here, and it's no big secret, that I fell out with Landell and Dundee, and I'm glad I did, baby, because they're making my life miserable. But I know how to correct things, so I got out. I bailed out first. But I'm going to tell you one thing. What they just did here, and I tell you, it takes a lot of guts to beat up an 18- or 19-year-old oh, kid. A year out of high school, it takes a lot of guts, Dundee and Landell, to go out and knock him out. But to go ahead, and you know Jerry Jarrett has only one good eye, and you were going for the other one, gentlemen. We saw you right here on the tube, baby. The tube don't lie. You were going for his other eye. Now, I could not. I've done a lot, a lot of bad things in my time, but I've never tried to purposely take out somebody's eye, baby, nope. because I know what it's like. Now, I'm going to say I'm watching my back, baby, because I got that door geared, Jack. If they come in, I'm going to knock them in the next week. Now, I heard Eddie Marlin out here, and he took it upon himself to see if he could get Jerry Lawler back here. And I hope to God he does, because you if anybody can help me out, it's Jerry Lawler. But see, what Dundee and Landell don't know about Jerry Lawler is he is a friend of the family, and he watched that kid, Jeff Jarrett, he watched him since he was yay high to a jackrabbit grow up, and he's like family. And if he thinks he's going to let this go by unanswered, it's not, not going to happen. Now, I'll tell you, Landell and Dundee, don't get so, so glory happy in the back and all gloated up, baby, because you went ahead and knocked Jeff Jarrett out, but I checked him in the back, and he's going to be all right. Eddie. I got Jerry Lawler on the phone, and can we get him hooked up in here? Because he wants to talk to us. He's on the phone. You got a hold of Right him? now? Yeah, if you can get him in him here. Up? Bob, is there any way to get a... Uh, Get the phone. Can we get the uh, get the phone back? I don't know, Eddie, but we'll try right now. You got Lawler on the phone right now? Okay. We're gonna uh, this. I hope you'll bear with us just a second, but I think it's important enough for us to uh, take the time out to see if we can get all this hooked up. Can we? Can Eddie? I, we, I don't know whether we'll need to get the operator to uh, to switch this in here or not. Whatever we need to do, let's try to do it because I think it's that. Huh? Can 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 it, can it? Will it come out any further, uh, Bob? Or is that? Uh, 
Get the mic over there. He wants to talk to the people. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can get this rig out here. Hold on, people. We're going to get him on his phone in just a minute. Okay, let's yeah, see. He he uh, hey, Jerry, can you hear us? Huh? No, this is Lance. Uh, Eddie's out here with me, Jerry. Okay, Lance, yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, good. All right, listen, uh, you know, I, I, I just talked with Eddie just a moment ago, and I'm, I'm sitting at home watching the, this, this whole thing take place, and, and you know, this, I mean, this, this has just gone way past uh, what anything should ever be like this allowed to happen. Amen. And ridiculous. Uh, I think everybody knows, it's no secret to anybody, that I hate Bill Dundee's stinking guts, and, and everybody knows that I have hated being away from town. I hated having to lose the, you know, lose the loser leave town and not being able to wrestle there in my home area. But, but what has taken place today, Lance, even goes, even goes far beyond that. You know, the fact that I hate Dundee and the fact that I hate not being able to wrestle in my own hometown, that goes without saying. But what I've just watched take place here today, uh, D Dutch has already talked about it, you know, to see my friend Jerry Jarrett, and a lot of people don't realize uh, what kind of friends we are. Uh, you know, Jerry and I have been to, uh, have been friends, and we go back a long, long way through thick and thin when Jerry was struggling, uh, you know, trying to start his own wrestling promotion. Uh, I stuck with him then and, and, helped, and, and helped struggle along while this thing wasn't successful and helped make it successful and give the wrestling fans in this area what I think is the best promotion anywhere in the country. And there have been a lot of wrestlers, and Lance, you know them as well as anybody, that have come through here and have gone on to what they thought were maybe bigger and better things and uh, have not shown any loyalty or any friendship and have not stuck by. But I have always stuck with Jerry Jarrett, and I've stuck with the fans in this area because I love them, and I love him, and the people here know that, uh, you know, he stuck by me all the way through, too. And I am going to be here. I, I, after losing this loser leave town match, it's true. I've had to get on an airplane every week, and I've had to fly all the way across the country, all the way across the ocean to different parts of the world to wrestle. And believe me, Lance, I hate it. I'd rather be right here at home with the people that I know and love and the fans that I've wrestled for all of these years and that I want to continue wrestling for. And now... I have an opportunity to come back here and do it, and, and Eddie Marlin has called me and asked me to come back, and, and I told Eddie before, uh, sure, Bill Dundee will probably sue because there was a signed and sealed contract. That's all he can do is sue, and, and I think that Jerry and Eddie Marlin have enough money to keep Bill Dundee tied up in court from now until doomsday if they have to. But what we can do is take care of some business in the ring right away, so I will. I'm already booked to wrestle uh, in other parts of the country this week. I'm going to cancel whatever bookings I have. And Dundee and Landell, I want you to know, boys, the king is coming back to town, and I will be there. And I... Jerry, Jerry, just a second. Jerry, this is Dutch. Can you hear me? I hear you, Dutch. Okay, look, I hate, you know, I know you saw what happened. I'm disgusted with it, but I know we go back a long way, brother, but we got one thing in common. We don't like Dundee, and I don't know if you like Landell or not, but let me tell you, he's a low-life, egg-sucking dog, baby. So if you'll be my partner, I guarantee you, I had Billy Travis as a partner, but, you know, I, a, a lot of, uh, he, he's a good rusher, but he's just not there yet, Jerry. So if you'll be my partner, I guarantee the fans sitting at home that we're going to take care of business, and we're going to take care of it the only way we know how, and that's to kick their butts all over that ring, Jack. <laughs> Well, I think that pretty well tells how uh, Dutch feels about it, and I know how you feel about it, knowing how close you are to Jerry. Well, Lance, I just want to say this. Uh, you know, I, I felt, I think, I, I thought I felt as bad as I've ever felt in my life when I lost a loser leave town match. Yeah, I know that. Just a few minutes ago, when I had to sit here on television and watch Jerry Jarrett come out there, and knowing the kind of pride that's inside that guy, and to see him standing there and cry, uh, in front of hundreds of thousands of people here on television because I know his feelings. I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, here's, here's a, he, you know, he's feeling like he's not even a man who's able to, to help out his own son when he needs him. And I know what kind of emotion had to be going on inside him, and I felt it too. And I want to say this to Dutch. I fought hard against you, Dutch, and I fought hard with you, and you've done the same thing with and against me. And all I want you to do is promise me that Monday night, not, not only Monday night, but any chance we get a hold of these jerks, Dundee and Land Bill, that you will fight just as hard as uh, with me as you have against me in the past, and I promise you, and I promise the fans, and I'm promising Jerry and Jeff Jarrett. 
that we will take care of Dundee and Landell, and they're going to know what it's like to, to have somebody trying to put them out once and for all. We'll do it, Dutch. Okay, I give you my word, baby. We're going to stay together. We're going to teach these guys a lesson. I'm telling everybody that King is back, and they're going to know it. Okay, Jerry, uh, we got to get it on here. Thank you very much for all of it. I'm glad Ed got in touch with you. We'll see you this week, my boy. Okay, thank you, Bob. It ain't gonna do him good. Like he said, the king is back and the dustman's with him, and when we get together, things are gonna happen. Thanks, Ed. Go get him, Dutch. Ed, thank you very much. And Phil and Jerry Lawler. It's long overdue, I can tell you, and I know you feel the same way I do. Uh, forgive us for all of the behind-the-scenes stuff here, but we felt it was important. David, let's uh, ring the bell, and we'll see if we can get it on here. All right. Hey, everything else happened. We just will walk over here yeah, on camera. That's right. <laughs> We've got the ring waiting here. Our first look coming up, our first look in live action here of J.D. Costello. There he is, and the Mod Squad. Now, they've been in here with some conversation the last three or four weeks. Uh, here they are, ready to go today in a tag team match on championship wrestling. Here come their opponents. And let's go ahead with the official introductions. It's an expiration of time match. The total weight, 467 pounds. Introducing from Tampa, Florida, Thunderbolt Hamilton. And from Memphis, Tennessee, David Haskins going against him at 491 pounds from the Badlands of New Orleans. J.D. Costello and Spike and Basher, the Mod Squad. Expiration of time match, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Okay. We got the press book, I think that's what it is. I don't know whether it's, uh, what's that say on it? Oh, it's the rule book that J.D. has. It says Mod Squad rule book. I would expect it to be empty. Uh, Either, as, as, uh, huh? yeah, they, either empty or it certainly, I bet, has a different version of the rules than, uh, than the standard ones, for sure. Spike and Basher, the Mod Squad. Thunderbolt Hamilton, good drop kick. Put both of them down, both Spike and Basher. Feeling the seat. Thunderbolt Hamilton has run one of them out of the ring and the other one back to the corner. Okay, Basher in the ring now as Spike got uh, zipped out of there in his first appearance. And Thunderbolt is a good test for him because, boy, there, here's a guy that's got a whale of a background. And he is some kind of heavy-duty wrestler. David Haskins takes over. Basher fires him across the ring. Misses. Flying press by David, a good move, and uh, they they don't have the respect I think that J.D. Costello would like for him to have. Oh, from outside the D of Spike, David Haskins caught it right in the back as he was thrown into the ropes. That's Spike with the body slam. He drops down, used the fist. Yeah, he hit him right with a fist. Yeah, J.D. Costello Doing says we're looking promoting. at the next Southern Tag Team Champions. I know a couple of guys that are holding the belts right now that are going to have a different idea about Might that. have just a little bit to say about yes, that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Talking about the Fantastics, of course. Haskins' head slammed into the turnbuckle. Spike and Basher, the mod squad. This is Basher in there now. Haskins. Catches a knee to the midsection. E. Costello flamboyant at ringside. With his version of the rules tucked under his arm. There's a slam. Costello asking for the crowd support here. And uh, yeah, you hear the reception that gets as he wants applause for the mod squad. Spike and Basher making the tag. This is Spike coming in here now. Haskins up in the air and a backbreaker as Spike drops him down. Both of these guys looking at him for the first time, they are very stocky. The guys, they don't have any uh, six foot, six foot, uh, six inch frame, but they are really stocky. Got David Haskins up in the air. Now, one holding him up. 
the other climbing the ropes and a lion clothesline that just knocked him back down to the mat. Count is at one, two. That's Good it. That's it for the first fall. It's an expiration of time match, remember, but Spike and Basher, the mod squad, J.D. Costello, their manager, and there's J.D. declaring the victory in the ring. The hands raised, you see him over on the left there. Hey, I, you know, <laughs> I was trying to think exactly what to say about uh, the action in there today, and it's one of those things where I guess maybe I better let you say it's not <laughs> whatever they can say. Boy, oh, I tell you. Well, the official action here today: Dirty Rhodes defeated Benny Trailer, Dutch Mantell over Jerry Garman. Then it was that Dundee Landell thing. Now they won the match officially. They defeated Jim Jameson. It makes it makes it even more ridiculous what they did. They had already won the match. All they had to do was leave the ring. They That's had humiliated right. Jameson and, and John But no, They hang around. They hurt the referee. Then they go after Jerry Jarrett's one good eye in there. And uh, after they'd already won the thing. Fantastics won their match, too. They beat Tony Falk and Keith Eric. And it was a mod squad with J.D. Costello. Uh, an impressive debut here on Championship Wrestling as they uh, did win their match over yep. Thunderbolt Hamilton and David Haskins. I uh, was very delighted to see Eddie take the very positive stand, get a hold of Lawler, say to heck with a lawsuit, get him Let's back. We something. heard Jerry yeah. on the phone, and he is coming back in. And, and uh, it's I'm not any time too soon. We got to go. We'll have more of it next week. Hopefully not like this, but we'll have more of it next week for Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling. <laughs>